right, Joel. We're going to talk about crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles, yeah, yes. Yeah, one of my favorite plants. It's a lot of people's favorite plants. Yeah. Very popular plant, mm -hmm. and for good reason. All right, and we're going to find out those good reasons, right? Huge <laughs> blooms on them, six it. to eight inches by love three it. to five inches, and it blooms from June, July, clear through September, and sometimes October, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. up until frost sometimes. Love it. So a very long bloom mm -hmm. time, and there are very few plants with that spectacular of flowering that, that lasts that long right. in the growing season. Right. So that's why they're very popular. And they have, also have what I would call an incredible size range. <laughs> yeah. They grow yeah. from 18 inches tall, or actually eight inches tall, clear up to over 30 feet. That's a pretty good range. It's yeah. a good range, <laughs> and you know, the National uh, Arboretum in Washington did a program, and a lot of the Indian named crepe myrtles are all from that program. There are probably about 35 of them or wow. so. And they developed them, but they crossed them by with another uh, crepe myrtle that is known for cold hardiness and cinnamon bark. Mm. So that's why all of the newer varieties yes. from, from that area, all the Indian named ones have a lot of interesting characteristics. Okay. They're a little bit more cold hardy, they have nicer bark or flowering. and oh, yeah. So they've, they've developed a lot of that. So I would suggest those okay. for colder climates. Okay. Uh, but one thing you need to do is your homework. <laughs> There are a lot of crepe myrtles out there, but there is a size that's for any garden. And we're going to talk about that. They're arranged in four different categories. First is what's called miniature. Miniature. <laughs> miniature. Right. That's eight inches to four feet. And one called Baton Rouge is red, and it's about three feet tall. Okay. Uh, Houston is about two feet tall, bright watermelon. <laughs> Uh, Pixie white, okay. is, of course, white. Ooh, nice. It's about two and a half feet tall. Uh, Pocomoke, two two feet tall. It's a rosy pink, and New Orleans, and that's oh. the one that's eight inches tall and okay. uses a ground cover. As a ground cover. Yes, only gets eight oh, inches okay. tall, and it blooms uh, a bright purple. Hmm. So those, right? are the, okay, okay. those are the those are the 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 with a miniature one. Okay. Okay. Then it goes from miniature up to dwarf. Okay. Yeah. And that's five feet to 12 feet. Okay. Ocoma, that is a really popular white crepe myrtle. Only gets about 10 feet tall. I've used that one a lot. Cato, right. seven feet tall, bright pink, nice plant. Cherokee, an eight foot red one. Tonto <laughs> is a 10 foot magenta red one. Very mm. pretty, I have that one. Okay. And Hopi, which is about <laughs> eight foot pink. Okay. So those are the dwarf size. And probably the most that people should have, especially if they're putting them anywhere near around their house or in small yards, that's the size range that they should stay in. Right. Then it goes up from there. Okay. <laughs> we have what they call medium or intermediate sized crepe myrtles. All right. And those are from 13 feet to 20 feet. Wow, just a good size. Was it that, yeah, this probably for a small yard, you would never, if you want a tree, you would pick one of those. Right. So these are Dallas Red, very popular one, 18 feet, okay. red tree. Potomac, 15 foot, light pink. Okay. Catawba, which I have at my house, 18 feet, and it's purple, very pretty. Osage, 15 feet, light pink. Okay. Sue, 15 feet, dark pink. <laughs> and Seminole, these are all well named, 15 feet coral pink. Yeah. Those are very popular. I mean, there's, there's lots of them, but these are the ones that are the most popular. Okay. So that's ah. what I mentioned. Just scratching the surface. That's just that? scratching the surface. Yeah. Then you get into what everybody uses that they shouldn't because they get too tall for the ah, area they put them. Yeah. And that's the tall tree types that are 21 to 33 plus feet. Number one that's grown a lot, Natchez white. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. Gets yeah. over 21 feet tall and mm -hmm. it gets up to 30. It's beautiful, I love it. Mm -hmm. Sarah's favorite. Yes. Now that is a beautiful white crepe myrtle with cinnamon bark mm -hmm. and nice uh, pendulous branches, 25 feet. Tuscarora. One of the most popular reds, the dark wall of Maryland red, 25 feet tall. It's tall, yeah. 
and Tuskegee, yeah. which is also 25 feet and a kind of a more pinkish watermelon red. Okay. So those are the main That's categories. Good. So every That's crepe good. model out there can be categorized in one of these areas. And that's what you should research. Right. When you want to put a crepe model in your yard, no, you want a, a 20 foot crepe model, or you want a, only a 10 or 12 foot crepe model. Try to find one in these categories. Because there's, you notice there's co all colors. Yes. And these aren't the only ones. So do your research and find them. And you may have to, if it's not at your local nursery or garden center, you may have to order it, mm -hmm. but you would at least have the correct size plant for the right place. And you wouldn't have right. to do what we call crepe murder, murder. which is <laughs> cutting uh, the huge trunks of the tree. And it really doesn't do the tree justice and all that. It's, it's you're just right. not good. You're right. You can't emphasize it enough. Right plant, right place, right? Because we definitely don't want people to do the murder. Right. So yeah. stop to chop is what we do. Yeah, people, that was, right? that's stop another thing that we do. Wow. Um, yeah, because there's a proper way to prune crepe myrtles. Right. And when they're the right size, um, you don't have to cut very much off of them. And that's, that's how you cut them. You take the, the little small stuff off, the crossing branches, the little yeah. things, and you end up with a tree-shaped tree that looks like it, it, it's not been, been cut down. It looks just like a tree still, yeah, right. even though it's been pruned back. Right. And then it will bloom the next spring, I mean the next summer, and it looks perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And you just do that every year. I actually do every year or every two years pruning mine down like that okay and it's it's one of it's in it's a tonto it's the one that's uh in the 10 to 12 foot range so yeah. it, it stays small stays for small. me i like that okay and something else i like about crepe models exfoliating bark yes it does it's so, beautiful summer bloom but winter interest you know bark oh, interest that's yeah. that's true not only is the bark interesting in the winter time um but it also has good fall foliage a lot yeah, of them do yeah. So yeah, I definitely like that. Now, they live in zones seven through nine, okay. and sometimes into six. Some, okay. And some of the, they're, they are doing a lot of research trying to get them into colder climates. So zone six is becoming more of a reality for them. But you've got to understand, negative five to negative 10 degrees is about the limit between having something that's perennial and comes back like a tree uh to dying down to the ground. Got it, okay. So negative five to okay. negative 10. And that's what they're trying to work on to get a co more cold hardy varieties. Oh, I bet you they get it sometimes. I'm, I'm sure they I will. They and it. there's a lot that they sell. And I'm, I've known people in Pennsylvania and all places, you know, that have grown crepe merle. Oh, I have a crepe merle in yard. You know, they take care of it really well and wrap it up in the winter okay. and let it survive every year. So it, it's possible. Oh, good for them. So let me ask you about any major diseases or insect oh, pests we need to know about? Unfortunately. And yeah, there are a few out there. Yes. Um, for, for number one for us in this area is crepe myrtle bark scale. Yeah. And it's not been here for very long. It's, it's, it's blown up from the southern of Texas area on up uh, through the, the southeast. Yeah. It hasn't even reached all of the southeast yet. So. It sure hasn't, yes. Uh, but it's bad. Uh, we, you have to treat it everywhere. It's usually a soil drench mm -hmm. of insectic in, uh, systemic insecticide that the tree takes up in the spring. The best time to apply it is in the spring yeah. as the tree comes out and, uh, and it'll protect it for, and, and sometimes you get up to two years of right. protection from, from one drench. Uh, and I have known people, and I have tried it myself, uh, you put the horticulture dormer oils on it, and it, you know you make sure all the bark is all, loose bark is off, and you spray it with the, the dormant oils right. and do all of that, and it just it 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 kind of controls it, but you've got to keep at it. Whereas the drench just happens once. Yeah. And I have been able to get in my house. I've been able to get two years. I have too. Out yeah, of the drench. the drench. So I mean, Works well. but in a higher like a traffic area at the university, sometimes. You have an islands in the middle of streets yeah. that are got crane models. We have to treat those every year because the the, the stress on the plants right. is so much that they need that extra help. Yeah, and that, and that makes sense. So since we, you know we're talking about the university, and I know y'all have a lot of plantings there at the university. So mm -hmm. what about the different cultivars as it relates to crepe myrtle bark scale? Uh, 
I've seen a not not a whole lot of difference. Okay, not a lot of difference. Okay. No. Okay. And a lot of people have said, you know, some people have better luck with some and the other. Now, I would say uh, some of the red varieties of mine have are more susceptible at home, but also so there are, are the purple ones. Oh, okay. And then the pink one didn't seem to be affected as much at all. Yeah, so I mean, it, yeah. in it, and I don't have a white one, so I right. couldn't, I can't tell you about that. Right. So yeah. It, I think there's there's actually studies out for that to see what varieties do best. It'd be interesting to see what they say. Yeah. Yeah, but crepe myrtle bark scale, it's a problem. Yeah, and then there's the sooty mold with that that right. goes with right. that. Right. When the you, fungus. You, right. the, and the same thing. First thing you think of when it first started around here, thought well it has aphids because they yeah. they do get aphids a lot. Sure. And so you spray the aphids and the sooty mold goes away. But this was something different, and it's that crepe myrtle bark scale. Yeah. But I, I'd say yeah. Um, Pruning is, is also a good practice to okay. help with the crepe marble bark scale because they like to be on the tips of the plants. And so mm -hmm. when, if you prune it regularly every year and just take the tips off like you're supposed to, then you end up getting rid of a lot of it and then you spray mm -hmm. it with the dormant oil. And I think that's probably why I've been able to get two years or so okay. of the drenches because I do, I tip, tip them and I spray them with dormant oil and uh, and then I. This seems to work. Yeah, good. seems. But they 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 do come back. It's usually the fall of the next year. Right. Just got to be persistent. Yeah. You know, persistent. Keep up with it. Yeah. Just keep up with it. But yeah, that's the major insect pest. Mm -hmm. The major fungal disease is going to be powdery mildew. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's usually because now crepe myrtle's like full sun. Mm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with, when it gets into a shady area and you, you're thinking there's other plants around it, it's not getting air mm -hmm. circulation, and that's when you get the powdery mildew because exactly. the plant's stressed because it's not in full sun, it's, it's thick, there's not air, good air circulation, and you get powdery mildew. Get powdery mildew. And some of those suckers, you know. Yeah, the uh, sucker. Yeah, have powdery mildew. Get rid of the suckers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, keep it a treat because, I mean, they, sometimes it wants to be bushy. The okay. smaller, the, you know, the miniatures and the dwarfs tend to want to be a bush rather than a tree, so you have to prune it into a tree, so okay. that's when you get a lot of problems. I, I, the tree forms are more open and less prone to getting a lot of the problems okay. with, with the diseases for that. Right, yeah, full sun, good air circulation is what you mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what you Yep. Wow. Yeah, but those are what I consider like major, you know, problems with the crepe myrtle. But they're worth it. But they're worth it. Yes. Because <laughs> they are they're so pretty. It. They're worth it. So again, right plant, right place. Right plant, yes. There, are, there is a size crepe myrtle for everyone, for any garden. But you've got to do yeah, your do. research and find the right one. So then you don't have to do a lot of pruning to That's it. That's right. That's right. Less, less maintenance for you. Joe, that was good. That was good. I can see you like crepe myrtles a lot. I do. <laughs> so do I. Thank you much. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the familyplotgarden.com link in the description.